Hi, welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. I'm Emily and uh, today I'm going to look at some insects in our garden. So, well, let's say insects and hummingbirds. I'll get to that later. Um, I'm starting off here because like most people we want to attract pollinators to our garden. So um, my husband built this mason bee uh, home here and it filled up very quickly so he built another one on the side which as far as I know only has maybe one no maybe four or five filled holes in it but basically what happens is the mason bees come and um, lay their eggs put a little food in fill up with clay and uh, and then the eggs hatch and they eat the food and eventually they emerge as bees that are able to fly, younger mason bees. So mason bees are little black bees, they're maybe about a centimeter long, and uh, I think they're kind of adorable. Uh, however, recently, and this seems to coincide with the time the yellow jackets have been starting to build their nests in the roof, which I will also show you shortly, um, the Oh, there goes the yellow jacket. The yellow jackets seem to be here and the mason bees are not here anymore. So I keep seeing them actually coming and going from the holes. Just now there was actually some little kind of black wasp-like insect. I'm not sure if it was a wasp or a bee, but it looked like a wasp to me, but black and small. And uh, kind of like the mason bees, but not as, as round looking. And it was going like the yellow jackets do, in and out, in and out of each and every hole of these mason bee homes presumably looking for leftovers or larvae or whatever it might find. So that's too bad. I don't know if these have all been attacked or if the mason bees are finished their their usual um, cycle, but that was the end of our mason bee watching for this year. Um, yeah, uh, however, our rotos and parts of our garden are still full of many insects. So let's go have a look and see what we find. So here are some mud wasp nests. You can see all their holes. And if I pick this one up, uh, well, it's hard to see in there. But on the bottom you can see some of the casings from the old larvae. And then over here, is this whole eh, one single mud wasp nest. Nice construction. And you can see where it was attached to the wall and it's all flat. If we go along here, we can find the wasps currently building their nests. Well, here's somebody working on it right now. And over here, um, another one a little bit further along. You can see the attachment points. Sadly, all of these guys are going to be evicted from our roof. But, let's go see what other insects we can find. Look at this little guy. We used to call these stick bugs or inchworms when I was little and he does look like a stick. He looks like he's reaching for the other branch. One day I'll get there. I saw him just a minute ago and he was pretty much one length of himself further back along the branch. So I guess he just sits there until he takes a step and then sits there again, takes a step. I'm gonna come poke him just so you can see him move. Hey, little guy. Can to do some moving? Just He's just gonna lean away from me. All right, we'll leave him be. But I found this other little thing over here, a curled leaf. If you look down here, and I'm gonna open it up because I'm expecting this isn't a predator we want in our, well, predator a pest that we want in our red osier dogwood. There he is in his little curled leaf, this caterpillar. No idea what he is. 
Oh, look at this adorable little... I forgot what they're called. They're not legs. His legs are the six ones on the front. The little walking things that he has on the back are actually not legs. They're just the kind of feet that caterpillars have while they're growing. Pseudopods. Pseudopods. Thank you. Yeah, sorry to take away your home, little guy, but also kind of not sorry. I'm not going to kill you, but I hope you don't destroy this plant. This is beautiful to me. Um, just watching what seems to be mostly bumblebees right now um, in this rhododendron here. Um, but I just saw a white butterfly go by a few seconds ago. There are a couple ants here in inside the the clusters of flowers and uh, there was a kind of a small black bee. I don't think it was a mason bee but I'm not sure and uh, yeah what a beautiful place to be. Ah ha ha a beautiful place to be. I'm so funny. While pollinators are important, um, another thing that's important are beetles. And I don't know if I'm going to find one, but I hope so. So let's go have a look in my garden beds where I often find beetles toiling away under the plants. So I'm uh, on my quest to find a beetle in my strawberry bed here. And I haven't found a beetle yet, but it's so interesting to me to see the uh, um, I'm distracted by this spider who's considering wrapping up his prey, but he hasn't yet, uh, or she. Um, but the the whole ecosystem of a a garden or the wilderness anywhere is so complex, and we often think of insects in terms of beneficial insects or um, harmful insects in our garden. But actually, it's such a complex system that uh, that we can't determine really what is beneficial or harmful based on what it does to our produce or our garden. So for example in this one little tiny corner of my strawberry bed um, I see three well evidence of three different spiders. One the little guy who's wrapping up his prey up here in his upper web it looks kind of like a garden spider it has kind of a large abdomen and and some tiny little skinny legs that are, he keeps close to his abdomen. And then down below there's another one who actually I think has just run under the bed but it looks more like a like a hobo spider or a wolf spider shape. Like his legs go out beside him and his abdomen isn't quite so enormous by comparison with his thorax. Um, and then there's also a web which I don't see anybody in but it looks like the web of a rather large either trapdoor spider or a sheet web spider. Um, so clearly these three spiders are living harmoniously in this one little kind of quarter of a square foot area and making some sort of use of that space to feed themselves. Um, I don't know what this teeny tiny insect is that this guy was just wrapping up here or this girl whatever it is. Um, uh, but maybe that was a beneficial insect for my garden. Maybe it was a harmful insect based on what it might do to my plants. Um, but it's, it's just that the, the whole system depends on each other. So for example, the black beetles that I'm hoping to find, I only just learned actually eat the little slugs and maybe even the bigger ones that eat my vegetables. I never knew. I knew that I didn't think they were causing any harm to my plants, but they, uh, they're they actually helping me more than I realized. And then, um, you know, some ants bring pests onto plants like soft brown scale or aphids, and they kind of farm them there and make use of them. And that's great for the ants, but I get rid of the ants because I don't like them doing that. But some ants may be doing something that is useful for my garden. So to me, um, the the important thing about insects in my garden isn't good or bad, but diversity. So that if I have three different kinds of spiders in one little spot, or a whole bunch of different kinds of beetles and pollinators, you know, everything, larvae of all kinds of things, 
then they're sort of keeping each other in check and I don't have to, so I won't have a huge invasion of hobo spiders or <laughs> something I really don't want. Not that they really cause a problem for my plants, but it was the worst thing I could think of at the moment. Or, you know, of butterflies. We had a huge invasion of morning cloak butterflies once, which nearly stripped every leaf from our aspen tree. And our aspen recovered and it was fine, but when you have a, a balance of, of animals, then you they keep each other in check and you won't have too many in one place at one time and that is the mechanism that saves your garden anyway i guess that's my little lecture about mm -hmm. diversity um yeah there goes an ant running up and down where this spider just wrapped up her prey let's keep looking for beetles hopefully i actually find some there are so many interesting ones let's see what's in this wood scrap pile Lots of wood bugs. Another one of these interesting, maybe larvae that I found in the leaf back there. Wood bugs. More wood bugs. Oh, here's a roly poly. So, roly polies basically are rounder than wood bugs, although they're isopods too. We have a few different isopods here. Uh, some live on the beach. Uh, these two you often find in your garden. And roly-polies can roll up in a ball when they're scared. So quite often you find them looking like a little armadillo ball. And in fact, they're this kind of isopod. So this is a little black beetle. I'm not 100% sure if it's the type that eats slugs or not, but it looks like those that I think eat slugs. And uh, I just think it's so interesting how many things we discover about the animals in the garden. So there are these little black guys, or rather large-ish black guys, smaller ones, some of whom I know eat the leaves of some of my plants, and uh, and there are even cadaver beetles who have, they, they build a kind of hole and then they will drag with their partner beetle a, a dead animal like a little mouse or something and kind of dig and dig and dig until it's buried in the ground and then they lay their eggs in it and bury it all up and the eggs hatch and eat the cadaver before they come out. Ew, but useful. <laughs> so useful, I guess. <laughs> useful for them, useful for us getting rid of the carcasses. A little bit gross, but that's life. So I've come up to my neighbor's house where they have this wonderful hummingbird who has nested and laid her eggs and now is raising chicks in their Christmas lights. Um, I did manage to film them a little bit, but I wanted to tell you also that my neighbor has been hanging this lint up for the mother to use. and. Uh, She's been using it to line the nest and apparently also to clean her beak. Um, you can see she has her feeder over there and uh, and then she goes out to the trees somewhere presumably finding some kind of uh, uh, bugs. I think that mostly mother hummingbirds feed d uh, bugs to their babies in the beginning. And uh, yeah, and then uh, brings it back to them at their nest. So they're a couple of weeks old now and ready to fledge any time. Here's a leaf that's been halfway curled with somebody's silk, but nobody's living in it. An insect poop. There's a snail up here, a tiny snail on this leaf, which I will remove because I would actually like to 
have my apples and not have them eaten by a snail. So, I thought I'd check for caterpillars and I'm not seeing any, which is great. Hopefully we'll get at least half of the apples that are on here right now. Oh, there's some leaf curl. Um, I think that's going to be it for our insect video today. Obviously I haven't covered even 5% of what's going on out here, but uh, it's just, just amazing to go look. And I'm sure if you go look, you'll find totally different things again. And uh, yeah, explore your garden, explore your yard, explore the city, wherever you are. And I hope you find interesting things. See you next time.